So, I want to invest in the township. It's the best. Well, I'm all about investing my money in a property in the suburbs. That is the best. Who's right and who's wrong? You have to watch the whole video to take your decision. Hello everybody, you are tuned into Long Wealth. My name is Neo. And my name is Lebu. Today we're actually speaking about why should you invest in the township or why should you actually invest in a suburb? I mean, property investing, we have been engaging with you guys and hearing your different perspectives. It's quite interesting that people are making money in the suburbs. However, at the same time, they're making money in the townships. So now we are actually going to go deeper into content. When it comes to suburb investing, the main point, the main selling point that I've seen is appreciation. I have seen with property, with our engagements with property investors that you find these guys, they're not chasing the cash flow. They are not chasing having flatlets at the back of your house. They're not rather looking at multi-units. They're rather looking at an investment whereby I can take my money, put it in a property, knowing for sure that I got a development right from where it started. So in that way, you can actually see so many people gaining the fruits of investing in a development area that's located within the suburb. We need to firstly understand that why are we actually investing in property? Are we investing in property for cash flow? Are we investing in property for capital gains? Or are we what are we initially investing in the property for? And also what will actually depend if you're going to be investing in a township or you're going to be investing in a suburb. It's going to be how much are you actually expecting to be getting within a period of one year? So now say for instance, your goal is that you need to get to one, one million in one year. Already looking at that particular goal, that means that if you do not want a lot of stress in terms of buying houses in bulk and then flipping them, you definitely want to buy around one or two houses that will actually give you a profit of 500,000. If you are actually expecting a return on investment of around 20%, right, that initially means that you now need to be investing 2.5 2 million in order for you to get a return of 20% of 500,000. So now if you're looking at that particular game, it really makes sense for you to actually invest in a suburb rather than actually investing in your township whereby you are looking at your way low, your low, low cost housings whereby they only cost around 200,000 and you can only pick up 50,000 per property. So now when you're looking at that particular strategy, you then need to understand that what is your strategy and how much do you actually have right now so that you can actually invest in this property? As much as we are attracted to suburbs, we need to be understanding what are the cost implications that are associated with the suburbs. Mm. Because now, as much as I'll be saying that I bought a house in an estate, they are lions. You need to be understanding how much are you paying towards your levies? Because I have seen a situation whereby people are paying about 5,000 to 7,000 just for levies. We haven't even spoken about the bond that you are paying. However, it still makes sense only if the return on investment that you are gunning for is good because you find out that you're charging X amount even with that levy that you're looking at and you're getting your return on investment which is way better than other investment opportunities then you know for sure that you have actually sealed a good deal so it goes back to understanding what it goes back to understanding the investment side of property investing when you're looking at your suburbs okay so now let's look at township investing right so now we have a lot of people that are saying you know what i have a property in the township all i just want to do is to demolish everything in that particular property and then build my own units or i should just build a lot of units at the behind that particular property. The first thing that you need to notice is that in your township, you actually have a smaller space to actually build, right? And the thing that we actually see about township investing is that most of the properties that have additional extensions to that particular property have actually had add-ons and now with these particular add-ons, they are not actually approved by the municipal. Now this leaves you with a problem because now how are you then going to be selling this property from yourself to the next person that's going to be buying this particular property? Now you're left in a situation whereby you own this property. However, the only time you can actually sell this property is if you get an inexperienced investor that is only going to be paying cash. That's the only time you're actually going to be getting the person that's going to be uh, buying this particular property. Another pro is that body corporates aren't 
a thing in your townships. So let's look at that example again. We're looking at an estate. The reason why I can't build flat lets behind to rent out is because the body corporate does have a say to a certain extent to what I'm doing to my property. Because at the end of the day, what that will do if I start building about 20 back rooms and then people start renting, it's gonna affect the prices of the houses around. So that doesn't apply in, in your that doesn't apply in your in your suburbs. However, in terms of township, people will be like, you know what, I can take advantage of that that there is no body corporate that will be telling me what are you doing stop doing what you're doing and you're not allowed doing that so some people will take advantage of that but as Lebu did mention that it will come back to you however another pro about the township is that even looking at getting tenants especially if you bought in a township that's quite close to town or in a township that's close to your malls you know that when it comes to rental if you price it at the right price it's rather easier to get people in and out of your property so then you don't have so much stress i mean even let's look at it in this way if i should give you a practical example if my let's say flat let or back room i'm renting it out at 1000 rand and then let's just say that uh, I'm, I'm, let's just even the cost implications are not so bad let me explain why give you an example in terms of numbers if my back room is 1000 one of the back rooms is 1000 and i'm having 10 of those so that means i'm getting 10000 mm. so if one person does decide to leave look at it in that way i'll still be getting 9000 9, yeah. compared to the suburbs whereby let's say my income is 20000 that i'm getting from that rental if that person decides to leave now, how much will I be getting at the end of the month? No money. Without any tenant, I'm not getting money. So looking at it from that perspective, you get to understand, oh, with township, you can actually max on multi. However, as much as you are maxing out on multi, at what cost are you maxing it out? Is it at the cost of it's not registered, as Lebu did mention, and you still building just to see, just to get the cash flow, and then you'll see what's going to happen for it? Or are you going to consider the laws and build something that will be within reach. So now as much as township investing does actually have a, a greater cash flow in terms of you collecting 10 1,000s and actually getting that 10,000, something that we also need to understand is that you're looking at a certain demographic of people, right? So now when you're looking at people that work as security guards in townships, most of them get paid on hand, right? Meaning that they might not actually be getting a pay slip and they might not actually be getting money from the bank. In that way, it makes it hard for you to vet that particular tenant to see if they are actually able to afford this particular property. Whereas in your, in your suburbs, the people that you're actually attracting are people that are actually working good paying jobs. And now with these good paying jobs, they're obviously getting a pay slip and their money is actually going directly into their bank account. In that way, you can vet that particular client. So now looking at those situations whereby you are actually getting a greater return on the one side and on the other side, it's not as great as the township. However, something that you need to consider is that are you actually willing to take that risk of putting someone in your property that might not be able to actually afford this property that you're actually renting out to them? I mean, it's what you said right now reminded me of a situation that we were in uh, with a management company. It was quite sticky, but at the same time, I learned so much from it. So what happened is that we were using a management company that's in the suburbs. And then we wanted help from them for a property in the middle, in the middle bracket. So what happens is that with usually with these types, the suburbs one is that they require about this management company specifically wanted two months rent in advance. Mm. And then they also wanted uh, money to vet from the tenant who's from the potential tenant. So we're looking for a tenant. So they also wanted money from the potential tenant that, okay, if we are going to be vetting you, this is how much you should pay us. We haven't even spoken about rent. Mm. And then only you're going to be paying rent. So now let's look at that strategy. If that strategy does work in the suburbs or wherever it was working, that's great. Now, when we came with the strategy, people were inquiring about their property. However, now when it came to the close, people not closing. Because why? The people in that area were not willing to take out double the rent just as deposit 
and then only rent with other expenses that are related to them being vetting. Because now my next door neighbor was just saying, you know what, you just pay half of the rent and then you just pay half of the rent as deposit and you pay that month's deposit, you pay that month's rent and then you're in. Then I got to understand that even with the different markets, you need to be understanding what are the selling points and how can you actually maneuver to, to do well in that market. So we have actually given you what we think about property investing and what we think about township investing. Make sure that you do post down in comments that what are your thoughts? Would you actually rather invest in property in a township or invest in a property that's in a suburb? Okay. Or we're waiting for you. We did mention that Saturday we're going to be having a live. So looking forward to seeing you and discussing what do you think about township investing or suburb investment. Looking forward to that. No, no.